Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this men's sweater here. It's kind of big, so I have to move my camera around and I'm sorry. I'll try to do it slow. It's actually pretty easy. Um, it's mostly double crochet. Uh, the cuffs are single on, on the sleeves and the bottom cuff is single. And it does have some ribbing. You need to be familiar with um, back post and front post stitches to be able to do this because I didn't really go over too much how to do them So as long as you're familiar with those you'll be able to do it Now this is sized for a man now. I don't see why a woman could not wear it I mean, but the sizing is taken from a men's sizing chart and I have it in size it's large extra large and 2x men's sizes so if a woman wants to, you want to make it and you're a woman, you would just have to know what you would wear in a men's size. <clears throat> now the only really difference between the sizing that I did is the beginning chain count. Everything else is pretty much the same. But let's go ahead and get started on it. For this project, I'm using a Lion Brand Scarfy yarn. It is a uh, acrylic wool blend. Now... It is a, a bulky number five. You don't have to use this yarn, but you will need to use a bulky five. As I don't know, I mean, if you used a four weight, it will be smaller. And I don't know how much smaller because I didn't do it myself. So I would recommend a bulky five unless you're really, really familiar with crochet and you can um, adjust your sizes with the four weight. Uh, okay, there are 312 yards in each one of these skeins. So for the large, I went through about, this is my fifth skein, and I didn't go all the way through it. So for the size large, you're going to need about 1,300 yards. Um, extra large, I'm guessing, I would say probably about 1,500 yards. So I would say five of these would be enough for the extra large, if this is the brand that you're getting. And if you're going to be doing a 2X, uh, I'm, I'm just estimating because I didn't make that, I would say... 16 set probably 1700 yards that remember that's just an estimate that could be that's probably a high estimate it could be a less than that but i just want to make sure that you have enough um the color that i chose is called eggplant and taupe and then i'm going to be using a size j which is a six millimeter crochet hook now you're going to see me using two different colors of hooks they are both the same size one of mine just got tired, I guess, in the middle of me making a sweater. It grew legs and it ran off because I could not find it anywhere. So, um, also you're going to need, I put six buttons on mine. You don't have to use six. You can use as many as you want. I mean, you can decorate it, your buttons however you want. But I got these at Walmart. They're the coconut wooden looking buttons. And they are one and one eighth inch size. But they are at Walmart in the button aisle. If this is what you choose to use you can use bigger buttons smaller buttons i mean but this is what i use six of these and then you can going to need a regular thread and needle to sew those on or you can use yarn if you choose okay i want to take a minute to ask you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already if you check in the description box of this video or any of my videos you'll find an automatic subscribe link just go ahead and click on that and you'll be automatically subscribed and you'll never miss any of my updates. And if you could give this video a like and a share, that would be awesome. Okay, I'm going to show you on a smaller scale. Because I already have my sweater completely done. Okay, so this is the part that makes the sizing different. If you're doing a men's size large, you want to start a chain of 62. Men's size extra large... You want to start a chain of 66. Men's size 2X, you want to start a chain of 70. Okay? So 62 for large, 66 for extra large, and 70 for 2X. And then what we're going to do is just basically double crochet rows. So once you get your chain amount to the what you want it to be, go ahead and do a double crochet in the fourth stitch from the hook. And then it's one double crochet in every stitch for the length 
of your chain. Just like that. One double in every stitch until you get to the end. Okay, when you make it to the end of row one, large, size large, which is what I'm making, will have 60 stitches. And that is counting this chain on the end. Extra large will have 64 stitches with this chain on the end, counting him. And the 2X is going to have 68 stitches, including, that's counting this chain on the end. So right now, large, 60 stitches, extra large, 64 stitches, and 2X is 68 um, stitches. So now all we're gonna do is chain one and turn. We're gonna go right back into this very, very first stitch and double crochet. And then we're gonna work one double in every stitch till you get to the end of the row. When you make it to the end, remember mine is a lot shorter than yours. So I'm just showing you on a smaller scale. Make sure you go into the top of this little chain thing here as your last stitch. You still should have the same number of stitches depending on your size. So large you'll still have 60, extra large you'll still have 64, and 2x you'll still have 68. Chain one and turn and repeat. Back and forth rows of double crochet. That's all it is now. This We're working on the back panel of the sweater. You'll have the same amount of stitches at the end of every row depending on your size. So just keep working back and forth rows of double crochet until you get 45 rows done. No matter what size you're doing, it's 45 rows for it's the same for each size so go ahead and work your rows of double crochet until you get 45 done okay once you get your 45 rows done for that's the back of the sweater and now we're going to start working on the neck and the v of the neck okay now we are going to start over with our row count because now what we have done so far is the back of the sweater now we're going to start working on the front so we did 45 rows for the back now we're going to start over at row one for the front it's just easier to keep track that way okay so working on the front now we're still where we ended off row one of the front is going to be chain one and turn okay the number uh for row one of the front of the sweater the number of stitches that you do across will be different right here depending on what um size sweater you uh are doing so for a large you want to do 16 double crochets across for a extra large, you'll want to do 18 double crochets. And then for a 2X, you're going to want to do 20 double crochets across. So I'm doing the large. So what I'll be doing is 16. So I'm just going to yarn over and go right into the first stitch. And that counts as number one. I'm just going to work my 16 double crochets across. Okay, I've got my 16 double crochets. Remember, I'm doing the large. Extra large, you'll need to do 18. And 2X, you're going to need to do 20. So what we're going to do now is chain one and turn our work. Now, regardless of what 
size you're doing. You want to put two double crochets into the very first stitch. So it's one and two. And then just continue working one double crochet across in every stitch until you get to the end of the row. This is row two of the front of the sweater that we're working on. Okay, I've made it to the end of row two of my front of the sweater and you'll just have one more stitch than you did the previous row. So uh, size large you'll have 17, size extra large you'll have uh, 19, and size 2x you'll have 21. So now what we're going to do for row three is chain one and turn. Now we're going to work one double crochet in every stitch across until you get to your last stitch. So regardless of what size, it's still the same. One double every stitch until you get to your last stitch. Okay, I've made it to my last stitch and I'm just gonna put two double crochets into that last stitch. And again, you'll have one more double crochet than you did the previous row. So I'm gonna chain one and turn for row four. I'm gonna start with two double crochets into the first stitch. And one double crochet in every stitch until I get to the end of the row. Okay, made it to the end of row four. One more stitch than you did the previous row. Chain one and turn. Row five, we're gonna do one double crochet in every stitch until we get to our last stitch. Okay, I'm coming to the end of row five. Two double crochets into the last stitch. Always one more than you had the previous row. Row six, chain one and turn. And we're gonna start off with two double crochets into the first stitch. And then we will continue working one double crochet across until you get to the end of the row. Okay, I've made it to the end of row six. Chain one and turn. One double crochet in every stitch across until you get to your last stitch. Okay, I've made it to the end of row seven. Last stitch here, two double crochets into the last stitch, chain one and turn, row eight, two double crochets into the first stitch, <clears throat> now it's just one double crochet across until you get to the end of the row. Okay, I made it to the end of row eight. Chain one and turn. Row nine is one double crochet in every stitch until you get to your last stitch. Okay, I've made it to the end here. Two double crochets into the last stitch. 
just like that and row 10 we're going to start by chaining one and turning two double crochets into the first stitch and one double crochet in every stitch across until the end of the row okay i made it to the end of row 10 row 11 is chain one and turn one double crochet in every stitch across until you get to your last stitch Okay, I'm coming to the end of round 11, last stitch, two double crochets into the last stitch. Uh, that was row 11. Row 12 is chain one and turn, two double crochets into the first stitch. And one double crochet in every stitch across until you get to the end of the row. Okay, I made it to the end of row 12. Chain one and turn. Row 13 is, you can probably guess it, one double crochet in every stitch until you get to your last stitch. Okay, I made it to the end of row 13, my last stitch, two double crochets into that last stitch. Chain one and turn, row 14, two double crochets into the very first stitch. And then one double crochet in every stitch across until you get to the end of the row. Okay, I'm coming to the end of a row 15 and I, two double crochets into that last stitch. Now, regardless of what size you're doing, we will not do any more stitches of where there'll be two double crochets on the ends. Now it's just rows of one double crochet in every stitch. Now, if you're doing a size, size large like me, you should have 30 stitches now. If you're doing an extra large, you should have 32. And if you're doing a 2x, you'll have 34 stitches now across. So now what we're going to do is just chain one and turn. This is, and from now on, it's just one double crochet in every stitch. Back and forth rows. No more putting two stitches at the end. It's just one double in every stitch until you get to the end of the row. Then you chain one and turn, and then one double till you get to the end of the row. Chain one and turn. And we're just going to keep repeating that until we get 45 rows. Now remember we're on row 16 right now. And we want to do 45. Now you're going to have the same amount of stitches at the end of every row now. The large will be 30, extra large will be 32, 2x will be 34. So I'm going to keep going, doing my back and forth rows of one double crochet in every stitch until I get 45 rows done. So you can see what we've done so far as we created kind of a V. It looks a little weird now, but once we get the rest of it going and everything trimmed up it's or edged up, it's going to look good. Okay. Yeah, remember we're on row 16 now. Keep working one double crochet in every stitch until you get a total of 45 rows. 
Okay, I have finished my 45 rows on this side. So now we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. My piece is kind of big here, so let me fold it up here. So we're just going to repeat what we did over here, over here. That way we got the V-neck, and then they'll come together and go down. But what we're going to do it... <clears throat> We're going to count over, let's see, for the large, we did 16 stitches. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to count over 16 stitches from this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 15, 16. And I'm going to start my yarn in that 16th stitch. Now, if you're doing the extra large, you do 18. And if you're doing the 2X, you do 20 just like we did over here. The only difference is we're starting here this time instead of starting at the corner, but everything else is the same. So just go ahead and start your yarn, either in the 16th from here, the 18th or the 20th, depending on your size. Chain one. Now go ahead and put one double crochet into that first stitch <clears throat> and one double crochet into every stitch until you get to the end of the row. Now we're counting this again as row one of the front of the sweater, but it's just a separate flap. It's just easier to keep track that way. So this is the first row. It's just one double crochet in every stitch across until you get to the end. Okay, I have made it to the end of row one of our other <clears throat> part of our front flap. Now, I have 16. If you're doing the next size, you'll have 18 stitches, and then the two X will have 20. Now, regardless of what size you're doing, it'll all be the same. You'll have 28 stitches here that are empty for the neck. No matter what size you're doing, you'll have 28 stitches there. Okay? Now, we're just going to do the same thing that we did over here. So row two is just to chain one and turn. And we're going to put one double crochet in every stitch until we get here to the end. And then we'll put two double crochets into that last stitch. Okay, I've made it to my last stitch of row two of the second flap and go ahead and put two double crochets in it and you'll have one more stitch than you did the previous row. Row three is chain one and turn your work and now we'll put two double crochets into the very first stitch. And one double crochet in every stitch to the end of the row. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep repeating what we did on the other flap. It's the exact same thing. So you'll just keep working rows of double crochet like we did over here. Every time you put, you get to the end of the row on this side, you'll put two double crochets in the last stitch, and then you'll chain one and turn, and you'll put two double crochets in the first stitch, just like we did over here. And we'll do that for 15 rows, and once, like we did here. And once we get to 15 rows, then it's just one double crochet in every stitch, all the way down, until you get to 45 rows. And by doing that, that's going to create the V-neck. So I'm just going to keep going. Like I'm doing, like I did over here. One double crochet in every stitch across. Chain one turn. One double crochet in every stitch until I get to the last stitch. Then I'll put two in the last stitch. Chain one and turn. Start my next row by putting two into the first stitch. One double all the way across. So it's only this side that gets the two double crochets in the corner. 
until you finish the 15th ro uh, row. After that, it's one double crochet in every stitch until you get to 45 rows again. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this side of the flap, and then we can get started sewing it together. Okay, so I'm going to move my camera and show you what we got going on. So this is what it looks like so far. So you got your back panel and your two front panels. Now we're going to sew up the sides and leave a hole for the sleeves. So let me set my camera back down. Okay, now if there is a side of work that you like best, they both look the same to me. But if there's one that you like better, have it facing up right now. So if there's one of these sides that you think look better, have the right side facing up. But to me, they look the same, so it didn't really matter. But now you want to count down from the first row on this front panel, 18 rows. Grab that 18th row, that last stitch on the 18th row. And then you want to count 18 rows from the back panel, starting with the first one, all the way down 18. And grab that last stitch. So I got the 18th row on the front panel and the back panel. And what I'm going to do is just put a piece of yarn through that 18th row. And I'm just going to tie it together. Just a little little loose knot or a bow. Just to, just to hold it there. We're going to take this out later. This is just to hold it while we sew it together. Like that. And you want to do the same on both sides. So right here will be your armhole. And this will sew together. So now you want to flip your, where your work is wrong side out. So you can sew it together. So now my work is facing the wrong side. Remember, you do it the same on both sides. So I'm going to sew it together using a yarn needle and a piece of yarn. So we don't go through that 18th row. We start in the next row. So here is where my 18th row is. So you want to start in the next row. Now we're just going to simply sew it together. The only important thing is to make sure the rows on each side match up as you sew. So I always just kind of take my time and just do one row at a time. Don't hurry. Just go through. Do some tail there. You can sew it in later. I'm not going to go over. I'm going to go back and forth. And just, I always make sure, keep looking, take your yarn, or take your piece and flip it and make sure the rows are lined up. Because if you don't keep them in line, each of the rows, when you get to the end, it's going to be all crooked. That's probably the hardest part, I guess, is just making sure they stay lined up. And I'm kind of just grabbing a piece. And the top of the stitches like that. Looking and getting my next rows lined up. Go through again. So, it's pretty easy. It's just the most important thing is keeping them rows together. So I'm going to do this all the way down and I'm going to do it to both sides. See, I just keep checking and making sure my rows are staying lined up. You can kind of pinch it there like I do to hold them there so they don't slide around. There's nothing worse than getting this all sewed up, anything that you're making, and then um getting to the bottom and realize your rows went, went crooked and you got like an extra row on one side. I hate that. I've done that so many times. So I'm always extra careful now. Alright, so I'm just going to continue sewing this up all the way down until I get to the bottom and then I'll just uh, hide my tail and clip off my yarn and then I'll do the other side the same. Mark it off, flip it inside out, sew it up and then um, we'll flip our work right side out after we get it all sewed up. So I'm going to get my piece sewed and I'll meet back up with you here in 
just a second. Okay, I got both my sides sewed up. And if you want to go ahead, get all your tails hidden, you can go ahead and untie these bows or knots or that you put in the sleeves. Those stitch markers, get them out of the way. So it's all, my tails are all uh, sewed in. Okay, you want to make sure you flip your work right side out, which I already did. Here you can see would be the wrong side. That's where we sewed. So I went ahead and flipped mine right side out. I think I did. Oh, I didn't on this side. Okay. I was fumbling around. And then I kind of just kind of smashed the seam in a little bit. That way it's not popping out so much. But it looks pretty good. Seams look pretty good on it. So there. Now that part's done. So it's sewed together. Now we're going to do sleeves, obviously. We have to do sleeves, so buttonholes, and collar. But first we're going to work down here on the bottom. So I'm going to start my yarn. The right side of your work facing you, but I'm going to fold my piece in half. Now I'm working on the bottom right down here is the bottom. I'm just going to start in this very first stitch and we're going to do some decreases. Now we're going to do the same decreases depend no matter what size you did. So go ahead and start in that first stitch and chain one. Now we're going to do five single crochets in a row and then we're going to do a single crochet decrease. So we're going to go into that first stitch and single crochet. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. Now we're going to do a decrease over the next two stitches. So we'll go into the next stitch and drop a loop. And then the next one and drop a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over, and go through all three. And that's what we're going to do the whole way around until we get over here to the other side. So again, start off with five single crochets in a row. There's one, two, three, four, five. And then decrease over the next two. So go into the next one, drop a loop. And into the next one, drop a loop. Yarn over and go through all three. Again, five single crochets in a row. There's one, two, three, four, five. And then decrease over the next two. And I'm going to show you what to do when you get to this seam here. So five in a row again. Now the amount of stitches that you have on this row does not really matter. So I'm not really even going to count. Because you, <clears throat> cause we have three different sizes going. So just once you get to the seam... You see these uh, two that we sewed there together? Skip those. Don't go into this one and don't go into that one. Jump right over it like that. But continue to do five in a row. It doesn't have to be perfect right there. Just if you can, skip over those. Because this, uh, this, the amount here doesn't matter. It's just... It's not going to make any difference if you have different amount of stitches than me. It's not going to make a difference how many the bigger sizes have because it's just all going to be rows of single crochet. So no special, nothing special about it. So continue around doing five single crochets in a row and then a decrease over the next two. We're going to do that until we get back around to the other side. Just like that. Okay, I have made it all the way to the other side. You just finish out, uh, whenever your last decrease is, just finish it out in single crochets. If you don't have enough to do another decrease, if you only have three single crochets left, that's fine. One left, that's fine. The only thing you don't want to do right here is end in a decrease. So if you're working along and it looks like you only have two stitches left and you have to do a decrease over them, 
don't do that just put a single crochet in each one of those so like I said it doesn't matter how many stitches you have right now I'm not even going to count mine because yours is definitely going to be different than mine especially going around the seams we may not get it exact and that's okay it's no big deal but what we're going to do now is chain one and turn our work now what we're going to do is just be working rows we're not going to decrease anymore we're just going to be working rows of single crochet back and forth on the bottom of the sweater just to make a little bit of a band I guess so it's just one single crochet in every stitch now so no more decreasing it's just back and forth rows of single crochet one in every stitch and this is what's going to create the band on the bottom just a small one So I'm going to do this one single crochet in every stitch until I get over here to the other side. Then I'll chain one and turn and do it again. Single crochet in every stitch till I get back over here. Okay, I went ahead and did a total of five rows of single crochet. And that is including that first row that we decreased on. So there's the decrease row. That's one and then two, three, four, five. So five counting that decrease row. You can do more if you want. I mean, if you want the sweater to be longer than what it is, I mean, that's fine. But after you get done with that, just go ahead and tie off just like that. So now we got, it's okay if it flips up and stuff. We'll take care of that later. So now we got a bottom done. Now let's work on going up and clean up all these edges around the neck and back down the other side. So we're going to start our yarn right down here where we just tied off okay so just kind of go in to the side of this single crochet here and start your yarn and chain one go back into that same stitch and single crochet First thing we're going to do is clean up all these edges. Now put one single crochet in, in the side of each of these rows of single crochet. It doesn't have to be exact. This is another area where the stitch count doesn't, doesn't really matter that much. Okay, now what we're going to do, once we got one single crochet up each side of this uh, band down here at the bottom, we're going to try to evenly space out two single crochets to every double crochet all along up this first panel so you just try your best you see the double crochet to put two singles into every double just do it the best that you can it does not have to be perfect just like this so I'm just working two singles to every double crochet. And sometimes it's, it's hard to get it just right, but as long as you do your best, that's all that matters. Sometimes I really got to look at it, make sure I'm getting it in the right spot. So as you can see, mine are not perfect, but I'm just doing the best to get two singles to every double. And we're going to work this all the way up the side here. And I'll meet you when we get right up here to where we're going to be going around the back of the piece to where our neckline is. So just continue going up this front side, working two singles to every double. And I'll meet you right up here somewhere where the back meets the front. Okay, I've made it all the way up my first side 
with my single crochet. Now I'm right up here. Uh, here's the back panel. You don't really do anything special. You just keep going. Um, once you get two double crochets to this last, or two single crochets to this last double crochet up here, right here on the back, you just jump right over. You'll be able to see it's just one single crochet now in each one of these stitches along the back. As you can see now it's the top of the double crochets so be able to see them really well so you just work that all the way across here this the back panel and when you get over to here, you along this uh, starting this front panel again, you just work two single crochets to every double crochet all the way down this other side of the panel. So I'm going to continue that until I get down to the other side. But you can see it's cleaning up the edges nicely. Okay, I have made it to the end. Now, it does not matter how many stitches you have around your piece, but you do need to count them because what matters is that you have an odd number of single crochets all the way around. Your number, there's no way your number is going to be the same as mine because we just tried to evenly space them out as best as we can. And it's not going to be exact, and that's okay. But you just want to count them and make sure you have an odd number all the way up this panel all the way around the back and all the way back down to the side now if you happen to have an even number just put another stitch into your last stitch to make it odd that's all you have to do but you just need to have an odd number and once you get your odd number just go ahead and uh, slip stitch right over here and tie that off now that slip stitch isn't going to count as a stitch or nothing but i'm going to go ahead and tie that off once you got your odd number and i'm going to start back over here on the other side this piece is so big but as you can see now it's starting to look uh better as far as it's the edges are getting cleaned up and stuff so you see it right there now we're going to work on the ribbing for the buttonholes and the collar. So we're going to start back over here. My camera stand is not working out for me today. Now remember, you needed an odd number of single crochet all around the whole piece. Once you got that, come back over here to where we started the single crochet and start your yarn again. Now we're going to work a chain one go back into the same stitch and double crochet and now we're going to work one double crochet in every single single crochet all the way up this panel all the way around the back neck panel and all the way down the other side of the panel until we get back over here Just like this. So one double all the way around your whole entire piece. And so you get right back over to here. So I'll meet you when I get over there. Okay, once you make it all the way around into your row of double crochet, you still want to make sure that you have your odd number. So now what we're going to do is chain one and turn our work, and we're going to be working post-it stitches now, and I apologize. This thing is so big. So we're going to start off by working one double crochet into the first stitch. 
and then we're going to work a back post double crochet around the next. So you go around the post of the stitch from the back, so the post of the stitch is on the back of your hook, and then you do your double crochet. And the next stitch is going to be a front post double crochet. So you yarn over and go around the post from the front to where the post is on the front. Again, now the next one's going to be a back post. So go around the stitch from the back to where the post is on the back of your hook. And then you do your double. And the next one is going to be a front post double like this. And we're just going to repeat this all the way around until we get to the other side. Back post. And then front post. Back post. And front post. And that's going to create some ribbing once we get a few more rows on there. A couple more rows, I guess. Just keep repeating that back post double, front post double repeat. All around this front panel, and then all around the back of the neck, and then back around the other panel until you get back to the other side. And I'll meet you right back over there when I get there. Okay, I made it all the way around. Now I have one stitch left. Your stitch before that should have been a back post double crochet. You just want to go ahead and end with the double crochet into the top of that last stitch. Now we're going to chain one and turn and we're going to repeat that row again. We're going to repeat what we just did. See that ribbing is looking really nice on there, I think. I like it. So we'll start off with the double crochet into the first stitch. And then front post double crochet around the next. And you can see it's already front post double crochet. So we're just keeping our post stitches lined up. Back post around the next, which is already a back post. Front post around the post of the next, which is the front post. And then back post. So we're just going to repeat what we just did keeping our front posts lined up and our back posts lined up. And again, we're going to do this all the way around up this panel, all the way around the back neck, and all the way back around to the end of the other panel. Ending in a double crochet in the last stitch of the other panel, just like we did here. So we're just repeating the previous row. It's the exact same thing. Just like that. That's what it starts to look like. Okay, I made it to the end. I did my double crochet into that last stitch. Let's chain one, turn, and repeat it again. It's getting big. So we're just going to repeat it again. Double crochet into the first stitch. And we're going to start with a back post double and a front post double. Back post double. We're just keeping our stitches lined up just like we did before. Front post. back post and front post. We're going to do this all the way around again. All the way around. Front to back. Back down until we get over here to this side. So again, repeat it again and I will meet you back over here. Okay, when you make it to the end, we're going to do one more thing now. See, I just did my last double crochet. We're going to chain one and turn. Now you should be on the front side of your work. And now what we're going to do is single crochet in every stitch around. I'm not going to go back into the very first stitch and single crochet. I'm going to skip that one and go to the next one. And single crochet. 
and I'm going to put one single crochet in top of every stitch of our band here up this side around the top of the neck of the collar back down the other side until we get to the last stitch over here and I'll meet you up when I get over there so one single in every stitch okay once you make it over here to the end and you get to your last stitch don't single crochet into it slip stitch into that last stitch and then tie off your yarn hide that tail and then we'll get started on the sleeves the final process okay now for the sleeves they're made the same regardless of what size you're doing so and they're both each sleeve is made the exact same so I'll show you how to make one real quick and then you can go ahead and do the other one after that okay remember when we marked the spots for the armholes we skipped 18 rows on this side and 18 rows on this side so that's a total of 36 rows that we skipped right here we have 36 rows we need to put two single crochets to every double crochet on these 36 rows all the way around now right when you're doing this this round you have to get it precise it has to be 72 stitches so if you do um, we got 18 on this side and 18 on this side so that's 36 rows and if you do two single crochets to every double that's going to be 72 stitches and you need to have 72 that way we can work the sleeves a lot easier so uh, I'm just going to start right here in the corner and you can see here's the rows that you need to start in here's where we got them sewed up so I'm going to start in this first row I'm going to go right in the side of that double And I am going to chain one, go back into that same stitch, and single crochet. Now I'm going to work two singles to every double, the best that I can. You got to you got to try to get it as close as possible because you got to have 72 stitches when you get back around. So just take your time working around, putting two singles in the side of each one of these double crochets now this is probably the toughest row of the sleeve but once you get it down the rest of the sleeve will just fly by So I'm going to continue all the way around working two single crochets into the side of each of these double crochets. Now remember, you've got to try to get two in every one because we have to have 72 stitches when we get back around. So just like that. So I'll meet back up with you when I get all the way around my sleeve and back over here to the other side. Okay, I've made it around and I got 72 stitches. Now remember, you have to have 72. So if at the end you had 71 or something, you've got to put another one in, in the same stitch because you have to have 72. So we're going to go ahead and end, this is round one of the sleeve, by slip stitching into our first single crochet. Round one has 72 stitches now we're going to do a double crochet decrease so we're going to chain one now the decrease has worked over two stitches so we're going to yarn over and go into that very same stitch here that we just slip stitched into and drop a loop yarn over and go through the first two loops on your hook i'm going to yarn over and go into the next stitch and drop a loop yarn over and go through the first two loops on my hook and then yarn over and go through all three so that's a double crochet decrease that took two double crochets and made it into one. 
Now I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to yarn over and go into the next stitch, drop a loop, yarn over and go through the first two loops on your hook. Yarn over, go into the next stitch, drop a loop, yarn over and go through the first two loops, then yarn over and go through all three. Just like that. And now I'm just going to continue working around, putting one double crochet in every stitch around until I get to my last four stitches. So one double every stitch until you get to your last four and I'll meet you back there at the last four in just one second. Okay, I'm coming to the end of round two and I made it to my last four stitches and what I'm going to do is double crochet decrease over them. So I'm going to yarn over and go into the next stitch and drop a loop. Yarn over and go through the first two loops. Then I'm going to yarn over and go into the next stitch, drop a loop. Yarn over and go through first two and then yarn over and go through all three. Now the last two stitches, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to yarn over, go in, drop a loop. Yarn over, go through the first two, and again, yarn over, go into the next stitch, drop a loop. Yarn over, go through the first two, and then yarn over and go through all three. Then we're going to end by slip stitching into our first double crochet decrease right here. And that'll end round two, and you will have a total of 68 stitches now. Now round three. We're going to chain one and we're going to do a double crochet decrease over the first two stitches. So go ahead and yarn over, go into that very first stitch, drop a loop, yarn over, go through the first two loops, yarn over, go into the next stitch, drop a loop, yarn over and go through the first two and yarn over and go through all three. Now it's just one double crochet in every stitch around until you get to your last two stitches on the other side. So I'll go ahead and meet you over here on the other side of our last two stitches. Okay, I'm coming to the end of round three and there's my last two stitches. And I want to go ahead and do a double crochet decrease over those two stitches. And then I'm going to end round three by slip stitching into my first double crochet decrease right here. Like that. And now you should have a total of 66 stitches. So round four, we are going to chain one. Now we want to work nine double crochets in a row. So we just go ahead and go right back into this first one. So there's one, two, three, four, five, And there's nine. So I did nine in a row, and now I'm just gonna do a double crochet decrease over the next two stitches. And now I'm gonna repeat that again. Nine double crochets in a row, and then a double crochet decrease. Nine in a row, and then a double crochet decrease, and I'm gonna repeat that all the way around until I get back to the beginning. Okay, I've made it to the end of a row four. Your last stitch should have been a decrease. Now we're going to go ahead and end by slip stitching into our first double crochet and you should have a total of 60 stitches now. So for round five, what we're going to do is chain one, go back into that same stitch and double crochet. So we're just going to put one double crochet in every single stitch all the way around for round five.
no decreasing on round five. So one double every stitch and I'll meet back up with you when we get back around to our starting point. Okay, I've made it to the end of round five and you still should have 60 stitches. You wanna go ahead and end that round by slip stitching into your first double crochet. Then we're gonna chain one for round six. We're going to put one double crochet into the first eight stitches. So go into that very first stitch and that's one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, and then we're going to double crochet, decrease over the next two. So that is a repeat for this round, round six. One double crochet into the next eight stitches, and then a double crochet decrease. One double into the next eight, and a double cro crochet decrease all the way around back to the beginning. So I'll meet back up with you here in just one second. Okay, I've made it to the end of round six, and you should have ended in a, de a decrease, and now you have, should have 54 stitches. Go ahead and end that round by slip stitching into your first double crochet. Now round seven, I'm gonna chain one, and I'm gonna work double crochet back into that first stitch, and one double crochet in every stitch all the way around back to the beginning. So round seven has no decreasing. Just one double crochet in every stitch until you get back to the beginning. So I'm going to keep going and I'll see you over here in just a second. Okay, I've come to the end of round seven. 54 stitches still. Go ahead and end with a slip stitch into your first double crochet. Round eight, we're going to chain one. Now this time we're going to do one double crochet into the first seven stitches. Two, three, Seven, and then double crochet decrease over the next two. And that's the repeat for round, round eight. One double crochet again into the next seven, and then double crochet decrease. One double into the next seven, and double crochet decrease all the way around back to the beginning. Okay, I've made it to the end of round eight. You should have ended in a decrease and you should have 48 stitches now. We're gonna end it by slip stitching into our first double crochet. Now, rounds nine and 10 are the same thing. We're just gonna chain one and work one double crochet in every stitch around. So we do this for two rows. So we're on row nine, we work one double crochet every stitch around to the beginning. You'll have 48 stitches. And then you do another row, round 10, one double crochet in every stitch around to the beginning, and you'll still have 48 stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and do rounds 9 and 10, and I will see you in just one second when we're finished. Okay, I've made it to the end of round 10. And you still should have 48 stitches. Go ahead and slip stitch into your first double crochet to end that round. And I did not switch hook sizes. I just switched, or I, for some reason, lost the hook I was just using. I set it down and then now it's just gone. So it's the same size hook, it's just a different hook. Um, so for round 11, we're gonna chain one. And now we're gonna do one double crochet into the first six stitches. Which one? two, three, four, 
five, six, and then double crochet decrease over the next two. So that's the repeat for round 11. Oops. One double crochet in the next six, and then a double crochet decrease over the next two. Double crochet in the, in the next six, and then double crochet decrease all the way around, back to the beginning. Okay, I've made it to the end of round 11. You should have ended in a decrease and go ahead and end with a slip stitch into your first double. And now you'll have 42 stitches. Now what we're going to do is for rounds 12, 13, 14, and 15, it's one double crochet in every stitch. So we just chain one and we work one double crochet in every stitch. We're, on, we're working round 12 now, so you want to go one double crochet in every stitch for four more rounds until you finish round 15 and then I'll meet back up with you after we're done with round 15 and you should have 42 stitches at the end of every round okay I have made it to round the end of round 15 and remember you still should have 42 stitches go ahead and end with a slip stitch into your first double crochet so round 16 we're gonna chain one and we're gonna put one double crochet into the first five stitches And then we'll do a double crochet decrease so there's five and then double crochet decrease like that and that's the repeat one double crochet into the next five and then a double crochet decrease and then five double crochet again and then a double crochet decrease all the way around back to the beginning and also when you're counting your rows remember that very first row of single crochet counts as row one so I just want to let you know that make sure you just weren't counting the rows of double crochet that's number one so we're on round 16 now so five doubles and then double crochet decrease all the way around back to the beginning Okay, I have come to the end of round 16. You should have ended in a decrease. Go ahead and end with a slip stitch into your first double, and now you'll have 36 stitches. Now, rounds 17 through 22 are just one double crochet in every stitch. So you just chain one. We're on round 17 right now, and work one double crochet in every stitch. And you want to do that until, keep going around, you'll have 36 stitches at the end of every round just slip stitch in with the slip stitch in your first double crochet and then start again round 17 through 22 is one double crochet in every stitch so I will go I'm gonna go ahead and work mine and I'll meet back up with you when I finish round 22 remember 36 stitches at the end of every round Okay, I have made it to the end of round 22, and I still have my 36 stitches. So I'm going to end with a slip stitch into my first double crochet. Chain one. Now round 23 is going to be one double crochet into the first four stitches. And then a double crochet decrease over the next two. And that's the repeat now. Just like that. One double crochet into the next four, and then double crochet decrease. Double crochet the next four, double crochet decrease, all the way around, back to the beginning. Okay, I have made it to the end of round 23, and now you should have 30 stitches. So go ahead and end it, oh, sorry about that, by slip stitching into your first double crochet. Now, for rounds 24 through 31 is one double crochet crochet in every stitch so I'm just going to chain one for round 24 and I'm going to work one double crochet in every stitch and I'm going to keep working one double crochet in every stitch until I finish out round 31 and remember you're going to have 30 stitches at the end of each round so 24 through 31 are rounds of one double crochet in every stitch 30 stitches at the end of every round and you want to repeat that back here to the beginning and I'll meet you when I get to the end of round 31 
Okay, I have made it to the end of round 31 and I still have my 30 stitches. Now I'm gonna end with a slip stitch into my first double crochet. Now I'm gonna start the cuff, but the cuff is gonna be about approximately two more inches. If you feel like you want to add more rows, add them right now. Keep doing this, these double crochet rows of 30. If you wanna add a couple more, if your sleeves, you don't feel like your sleeves are long enough, um, this is the row that you would add um, a couple more on if you wanted them to be longer. That's up to you. But I stopped at row 31, <clears throat> and now I'm going to do the cuff. Remember, it's going to be a couple more inches still for the cuff. But some people always ask, if I do sweaters, what row they should add more length on. This is the one you'd want to do. But I stopped at 31. So for 32, row, round 32, what we're going to do is chain one. Now we're going to be working single crochet. We're going to put one single crochet into the first five stitches. So there's one two, three, four, five, and then single crochet decrease over the next two. So we just go into the next one and drop a loop, and then into the next one and drop a loop. Yarn over and go through all three loops. So that's the single crochet decrease. Again, one single crochet into the next five stitches. And single crochet decrease over the next two. So go into the next, drop a loop, and into the next, drop a loop, yarn over, and go through all three. Now we're going to repeat this one single crochet into the next five until we get back around to the beginning. And then single crochet in the next five, and then decrease over the next two. I'll just go ahead and finish it out. I'm almost there now. Now, once you make it around and you just do your last decrease there, you should have two stitches that remain. Just put one single crochet into those last two, like that. And now you'll have a total of 26 stitches now. Now we're going to be working in a continual round. So I'm going to grab a stitch marker. I'm just going to use this piece of yarn. So I'm not going to end my rounds by slip stitching anymore. I'm going to go ahead and put my marker right here. That where I, I know where I end and where I begin. So now I'm just going to be working rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. So that was round 32. So round 33, I'm just going to jump over here to my first single crochet, not that chain one, the first single crochet, and single crochet into it, and I'm going to work one single crochet in every stitch until I get back to my stitch marker. No more de decreasing. We're almost done with the sleeve. So one single in every stitch. And this thing is big. Until you get back to your stitch marker. Just like that. Okay, I've made it back to my stitch marker at the end of round 33. I still have 26 stitches. Go ahead and move your marker up and start round 34. And it's just the same thing. One single crochet in every stitch around. We're going to keep continuing doing this, one single crochet in every stitch around, and when you get to your stitch marker, you just move it up and start again until you hit a total of 40 rounds. So I'm on uh, 34 right now. You want to keep doing it until you finish your 40th round. Now it'll appear that the cup is getting a little tighter. That is correct. It's supposed to do that. It's a little bit I designed it to be a little bit snug on the wrist. So you're not doing anything wrong. It will stretch out too. But it's, yes, it's supposed to get a little bit uh, tighter. Nothing to worry about. You're not doing anything wrong. So just continue around until you get a total of 40 rounds. 
Okay, I finished my 40th round and this will stretch out so don't worry about it being kind of tight. Go ahead and end with a slip stitch into the next single crochet like that and then you can tie this off and take that stitch marker out and you want to do the other sleeve the exact same so I'm going to go ahead and hide all my tails real quick. Okay, last thing you want to do is sew on the buttons. I already have my sewed on. Now you don't have to do it exactly like me. You can use more or less buttons. I use six. Um, but now if you're making this for a man, the men, you sew the buttons on a men's sweater on the right side. Now for a woman, you sew them on the left side of the sweater. So if you're, make, if you're making this for a woman, the buttons would go on the left. A man, which I did, if you look at it here, this is the right way. You sew them on the right side and then they button on the left. Okay, so I placed mine. I started mine at the very first row of double crochet down here. I kind of just followed it over and sewed it kind of in the, in the middle of my ribbing. And then I skipped um, six rows. On that sixth one, I followed it up and sewed another one, kind of in the, the middle of the ribbing. And then count over six rows again. One, two, three, four, five, six. And on that sixth one, I kind of just followed it up, sewed it right there. And that's how I spaced mine. One, two, three, four, five, sixth one. Follow it up, just sew it in the middle of this ribbing. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it doesn't have to be perfect. That's how I did mine, but of course you don't have to do that like that. And then it's gonna button in between these, um, the ribbing over here. You can just button it right through there. Just like that. That's it, it's finished. Been working on this thing for a long time off and on <laughs> I'm, um, I'm glad that it's done I think it turned out really nice so uh, please don't forget to uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already remember I have a automatic subscribe button in the description box so you can click on that and then you'll never miss any of my updates and if you make this or anything else you know you can always show a picture of, of it to me I'd love to see it um, you can post it to my bagger day crochet uh, chat Facebook page. It's an open Facebook page. So it's a lot of friendly people on there uh, Just chit chat and crochet. I'll put a link to that below in the description box also if you're interested and until next time Have a good day Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this men's sweater here It's kind of big so I have to move my camera around and I'm sorry. I'll try to do it slow It's actually pretty easy um, it's mostly double crochet. Uh, the cuffs are single on, on the sleeves and the bottom cuff is single and it does have some ribbing. You need to be familiar with um, back post and front post stitches to be able to do this because I didn't really go over too much how to do them. So as long as you're familiar with those, you'll be able to do it. Now this is sized for a man. Now I don't see why a woman could not wear it. I mean, but the sizing is taken from a men's sizing chart and I have it in sizes large, extra large, and 2X, men's sizes. So if a woman wants to, you want to make it and you're a woman, you would just have to know what you would wear in a men's size. <clears throat> now the only really difference between the sizing that I did is the beginning chain count. Everything else is pretty much the same. I do not have a written pattern for this, and I will not have a written pattern for this. I only have this video tutorial. I'm very sorry about that, but let's go ahead and get started on it.